And then reason number two, you wouldn't know yet, so I'll have to tell you, using actual rather than estimated information. Using actual rather than estimated information. The overwhelming majority of the problems that you're going to do are going to use actual information rather than estimated information. Because how do you calculate a PDOR? What's the formula? Chance, do you recall? Or can you find it in your notes or in your, hand, in your cheat sheet for the last exam? It'd be, uh, no, it wouldn't be on your cheat sheet for the last yeah. exam. Uh, the manufacturing overhead divided by the act activity. Yes, and what word, what common word appeared in front of manufacturing overhead and in front of activity? What word appeared in the formula? prior to both of those things that you just described to me. Ooh. Brandon? Estimated. estimated. He was all over it. Estimated manufacturing overhead over estimated activity. Okay, and so activity-based costing, your, your definition of the calculation is actually more helpful with regard to activity-based costing because the information will not, it'll be the same, it'll still be manufacturing overhead over activity, but it may not be estimated manufacturing overhead over estimated activity, it might be actual manufacturing overhead divided by actual activity. Okay? Right, Heidi? Yes. Awesome. Whew. Okay, so far so good? Wahoo! So far so good? Yes, sir. You look like you raised your hand, Tony. Kind of, kind of, he's playing with his hand and kind of like, you know, like that. You got to be careful, you know. Anyway, I'm trying to be funny. You folks are a rough, at, rough. Oh, what did you did you hear the when the the ladies visit us us from advising? She asked. Um, one of them asked me before class, something about so, you know, something about how responsive you were at this time of day. You know, kind of, you know, thinking that you all might be sleepy and, and uh, that sort of stuff, I, I suspect. Now, if you look on the next, if you, uh, do I give you notes here? Yes, I do. Look at this on page 124. This is kind of new. Look, I give you notes on 124. I am on 124. Awesome. Almost. 124. On page 140, I give you the steps of activity-based costing. So now recognize I will never, ever ask you what's step two on a test. I won't. However, for some of you, this might prove useful because activity-based costing problems can be somewhat large and complicated. And so uh, having a road map, kind of if you will, is what that's intended to be. How are we doing? So far so good? Ryan? Awesome. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Nobody? Okay. Turn, if you would, to Mizzou Company. Sorry, it might be kind of poorly, kind of might be poorly named for, given that they're, you know, an alternative university an hour and a half down the road. Except Brent's <laughs> wearing a shirt. <laughs> hey, he's not unhappy at all. <laughs> you, you wore the right shirt today, sir. Oh, awesome. Mizzou Company manufactures two products. Get this, the Miz and the Zoo. Padoom. <laughs> Some people are slowly getting it. Yeah, so they're slowly getting it. Mizzou, Miz, Zoo. Get it? Yuck, yuck. Uh, anyway, they, the company estimated it would incur $130,890 in manufacturing overhead costs during the period. Co overhead is currently assigned to products on the basis of direct labor hours. Data concerning the products, the operations appear below. Now this problem is kind of unusual. What was the reason, what was way number two that activity-based costing differed from job order costing? Reason number two, that the way number two that they were different? We just talked about this uses actual rather than estimated information. Now here, we got the only problem in, the, in the, all of the handy handouts that is using estimated information, 
rather than actual information. Okay. So, and I guess I do that just to ease the transition for you from activity based, from job order costing to activity based costing. But, but the company estimated it would incur one hundred thirty thousand eight hundred ninety dollars of manufacturing overhead costs. Okay. So now here we've got some information about the Miz and the Zoo. Volume, uh, direct labor hours per unit, direct material cost per unit, direct labor cost per unit. Management is considering activity-based costing to apply manufacturing overhead costs to products. For external financial reports, the activity-based costing system would have the following three activity pools. So how we get to many PDORs is we divide overhead into what, is, what, is, what are called cost pools. Okay. And here, this company, how many do they have? Three. Three. Right? Three. Now, let's just, just for grins and giggles, does anybody have a calculator? Wait a minute. What's overhead cost add up to? Check out that overhead cost column. Add it up. See what it adds up to. Katie, do you have a calculator? No. That's very sad. So you're going to trust Matt? He's going to see if he does it right? You all done? What's this, what, do you, what, do you, what, what information do you got for us? Um, What's it add up to? $130,890 is what it adds up to, Whitney. Does that number look familiar? You're going to say yes. <laughs> and why were you going to say yes? Because it estimated, they, the company estimated it's going to incur the $130,890. Yeah, it does. And so it matches the number in the first paragraph, does it not? For sure. Awesome, right? Wahoo! So that should be warm, fuzzy feeling time. Some of you are dressed a little better for warm, fuzzy feelings than others. But that is warm, fuzzy feeling time. That you know these costs add up to what they're supposed to, the $130,890. Okay. Now, uh, required compute predetermined overhead rate using the traditional method, using this rate and the other data from the problem calculate unit product costs for both products. So let's calculate a PDOR, and I need to get writing utensils out. Hopefully, you do not have to do that. I need to get a writing utensil out. So uh, Austin. How are we going to, what's the formula I need to calculate a predetermined overhead rate, which is the first thing it says it wants me to do? Equals. Jennifer, can you give me a number? One of those two numbers? Estimated manufacturing overhead or estimated activity? I'm sorry? Uh, the second sentence. That first paragraph tells us. It's the only number that appears in that whole first paragraph up there. You see it way off on the left, second line? Yes. Because what is that? Read the label right in front of it. The estimated manufacturing over. Does that sound kind of familiar? Yeah. It does. It sounds kind of similar, doesn't it? So $130,890. 